It doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're old, it doesn't matter if you're fit or not fit. The simple fact of the matter is, is that bone density plays a big role in everything that we are working towards, whether it's fitness or long-term health. And the lame thing is, most of the industry and most of the mainstream is leading us totally astray. They're telling us that calcium is the most important thing, when in reality, when it comes down to bone health, when it comes down to making sure your tendons and your joints and everything are really functioning at their best, there are a lot of other things that are much more critical to pay attention to. So in this video, I'm gonna address the truth behind bone density and the truth behind the minerals that you truly need. Let's start with vitamin D because it's one that a lot of people know about, and it's one that's big right now. Everyone's talking about it. Simple fact of the matter is, getting your vitamin D from sunlight is always going to be the best bet. You can take a supplemental vitamin D, but here's the thing. Some people have their opinions, and there's some science that's starting to show that taking vitamin D3 could deplete your retinol levels. Now, I'm not saying don't take a vitamin D supplement, but what I am saying is making sure that you're modulating it. You see, what vitamin D does is it helps corral the calcium and put it into the right places. That's why when you look on a carton of milk, a lot of times it'll say calcium plus vitamin D, because they do sort of work kind of harmoniously. But what we have to remember is that we don't want to overdo it with anything. Getting it from sunlight, always going to be the best. However, there was one study that was published in 2005 in the Journal of American Medical Association that found that just taking seven to 800 IUs of vitamin D daily did dramatically decrease the risk of hip fractures in postmenopausal women. Now, that's not the end all be all, doesn't mean everything, but it is just some science to explain to you. But now let's talk about calcium for a second. Okay, calcium we're led to believe is the end all be all. We are likely not deficient in calcium. Between dairy, between almonds, between salmon, between leafy greens, it is highly unlikely that you have a deficiency in calcium. In fact, if you were to actually get your blood work done, you would probably find you're not that deficient in calcium. We're quite frankly a little bit brainwashed to believe that we inherently have a deficiency in calcium. When in reality, calcium and magnesium work together, and magnesium plays a bigger role than we might think. You see, magnesium can actually help regulate the serum levels of calcium in the body. You see, magnesium actually regulates the calcium transport in the body. In fact, there is a positive correlation between magnesium levels and calcium that's going into the bones. Yeah, believe it or not, more magnesium equals more density in the bones. Now, what we have to do is we have to understand the relationship between calcium and magnesium, because in a lot of ways, they're sort of the opposite. Okay, whereas calcium excites a cell, magnesium encourages the relaxation of that cell. Then where calcium causes the blood to clot, magnesium generally helps keep blood flowing. The same kind of thing when it comes down to muscle contractions. Calcium is gonna increase the muscle's ability to contract, whereas magnesium is gonna allow that muscle to relax. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. We just have to remember that relationship and the yin and the yang and the balance between calcium and magnesium. Here's the problem. Most people in the Western world are consuming three and a half times as much calcium as they are magnesium. If you're looking at balance here, how does that equate? This study was published in 1993 in the Journal of Magnesium Research. And what it did is it took a look at 31 postmenopausal women. Okay, and these women, they compared to a control group. Okay, the 31 women, they gave 125 milligrams of magnesium six times per day for two years. Then the other group, they gave nothing. It was a control group. Well, what they found is at the end of two years, the group that took magnesium had significantly higher levels of bone density and good bone mineralization compared to placebo. So that simply shows us that magnesium does play a role in bone density. It does play a role in how the calcium is taken up into the bone to actually make a bone harder and stronger. But there's a part two to this study. And this is actually looking at it a couple of years later. They found that those that were taking the magnesium, even after they stopped taking the magnesium, still retained their bone density significantly more than those that didn't take the magnesium. So not only is magnesium good for getting bones stronger, it's good for keeping bones stronger quite permanently. Next up, we have to look at vitamin K2, okay? Vitamin K2 and D3 sort of work together. It's the job of K2 to sort of be the traffic cop, so to speak. And when I say that, it means that it shuttles the calcium into the right place. So without vitamin K2, you have a lot of calcium floating around through the bloodstream and it's never really getting into the bones. Now, remember when I was talking about calcium and magnesium and how they oppose each other and how they kind of work together in that yin and yang? Well, imagine this. Imagine that K2 didn't exist and it wasn't able to direct the calcium into the bones where it was supposed to go. So you just had this high amount of calcium floating around through the bloodstream. Well, that means you have a very excitatory process happening. You have a lot of cells that are being excited, you have a lot of muscles that are being contracted, 
and you're basically having this issue where you're never getting magnesium to counterbalance because you are always having an abundance of calcium. So vitamin K2 is critical for putting that in the right place. Now what this is also being shown to do in some recent studies is actually free up more magnesium. Now the mechanism and how that's done really isn't known yet, but I can give you a strong hypothesis, at least as far as my opinion is concerned. When you have calcium and magnesium together, and suddenly the K2 is able to take the calcium and put it somewhere, you have less calcium opposing the magnesium. So the magnesium is able to flourish and do its job. Therefore, you have more free magnesium in the body. Pretty simple in my opinion. Okay, now let's talk about silicone for a second. Most people freak out when they hear silicone because they just think plastic or rubber or fake. The fact is silicone is naturally occurring. And if you consume enough silicone, you can actually increase the mineralization of bones. So basically what that means is silicone initiates the process of calcium being able to do its job in the bone. So don't be afraid of silicone. You can get it from leafy greens, you can get it from the right vegetables. A quick Google search will tell you the foods that are high in silicone. You likely don't need to take a supplement. Okay, now there's one other mineral that works in tandem with magnesium that I personally find very, very fascinating, and that is boron. You see, boron is a relatively new mineral as far as science is concerned. I've been looking into it a lot in the last few years because there were some early studies that showed it had a really profound effect on testosterone levels. But when it comes down to magnesium and when it comes down to bone density, it's proven to be pretty darn powerful as well. You see, not only is boron able to help the kidneys retain magnesium, it's actually able to sustain the half-life of vitamin D a lot better. So basically, it stabilizes vitamin D in the body. If you have these big fluctuations of vitamin D, which can happen over the course of weeks, that can cause some issues. Okay, then you're having bones that are getting stronger because they're getting calcium, and then suddenly it's being ripped away. And by contrast, that can be hard on the body. So if you extend the half-life of vitamin D, it basically gets rid of the chances of you becoming vitamin D deficient. We want our vitamin D to go longer, and boron is going to be able to help you do that. But when it comes down to being able to retain more magnesium, we have to think about how the kidneys function for a second. The kidneys are gonna flush out minerals along with water. When we drink too much water or when we don't drink enough water, our kidneys don't regulate right. And insulin plays a factor too, but our kidneys will actually dump a lot of the minerals, including precious magnesium that we need. So if the kidneys can retain magnesium, that means that our body's actually able to utilize magnesium better. It's plain and simple. So as always, keep it locked in here on the Thomas DeLauer channel. And if you have ideas for future videos, health, fitness, fasting, ketosis, whatever the case may be, make sure you put them in the comment section below so that I can see them. I will see you in the next video.